Now I will link a whole bunch of sharpening supplies in the description. Just go down in the description, scroll down. You will find a whole bunch of sharp sharpening supplies, including a bunch of different tri stones. So you can get your tri stones there if you are wanting to get a tri stone. Also, I have a playlist full of sharpening videos. So if you want more sharpening content, go to my playlist. There's lots there. Bang. Needs knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is not here right now. And today, we are going to test out the AccuSharp Tri-Stone that I got from Menards. Now, I did see similar, because there's a lot of different uh, companies that make um, systems just like this. This one I got for $34.99 from Menards. Now they do have other versions of this on Amazon for around $30. You know, it just depends on whether or not you get the diamond or, you know, which stones you get on yours. Now there is supposed to be an angle guide in here also as well. So we, oh, there's the angle guide right here. So we do have a little angle guide at 21 degrees. So... This will help, and what's really cool is it's got this flat portion right here, because sometimes these things are bendable. This one's actually a pretty good one right there. So that will help people to get an angle, find an angle, and hold it. They'll just have to hold it to go across the stone, and then line it back up. So for $34, you're getting a diamond, an aluminum oxide, and a fine ceramic. Um, this feels a lot like my medium ceramic. Now, let me just say this. I'm a little confused by this. It says the coarse is 320 grit, which would be the diamond. And then the medium is 280 grit. That doesn't make sense. And then the fine is 1500 grit, which would be the white. So they're saying that the medium is a lower grit than the coarse. Now, what I'm thinking by that is because diamonds and aluminum oxide is a little bit of a different grit rating system so i'm guessing that the the 280 medium grit on this aluminum oxide is finer than a 320 grit diamond i think that's where they're going with that or it's possibly they just messed up now when i was further reading through the you know, the little pamphlet that comes in the box, it does say the coarse diamond at 320 grit, synthetic 120. The medium deluxe 280 grit, 180. And then the fine ceramic 1500 grit, 240. So that might have been the reason why, you know, it was saying that uh, the aluminum oxide was coarser than the, the diamond. I will go through this so you can look at it if you want to. And here's the back of the box, side of the box, other side of the box. There you guys go. It says no oil or water necessary. I find that to not be true. <laughs> and I haven't even used it yet. So the diamond, yes, you don't, you're not gonna need anything. You can do that just dry. The aluminum oxide, but um, you should definitely use um, soap and water, oil, or, I mean, I guess you could use water. I'm guessing water won't be as good as soap and water. So with ours, we're going to use soap and water. But it does say you can go dry, and we will test that. But I'm guessing that's not going to be the case. Now with ceramic, you can also go dry. I tend to want to use water. When I do it, um, soap and water is probably just fine too. Um, yeah, I know it'll be just fine, but it'll help keep the metal from sticking to the surface and us having to clean it constantly. Also in this video, we will um, I will talk a little bit about conditioning this when it starts getting bad after you've done a lot of sharpenings on it and it starts to wear. Now let's get to sharpening so like i said you know you have your base here 
The base has got some rubber feet. This table's a little wobbly. I'll try to not wiggle too much. Um, luckily, with the, the stones we have, I shouldn't have to put a lot of pressure. Now, with diamonds, you know, you want to put little to no pressure. And when you say no pressure, obviously, you're putting a little bit of pressure because you have to hold the angle and scratch the surface of the stone. Now, this knife right here is the Civivi. Praxis. This knife is Timbo's, and Timbo sent me a bunch of knives to check out. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate you, buddy. He's been a huge supporter of us Ooh, since we were since we were a very small channel, which we're still a small channel, but I mean since we first started. Now, I'm gonna sharpen this because I have been using it and testing it out, and I got a little bit of. Let's see if we can get to come up. You see it right there shining. You can see it all right there. It's, um, it won't hone back. And I've been, I honed it because it was from here to here. But since I've been doing a bunch of testing with it, um, it needs a little bit of edge repair. And also, I like to, it's nice sometimes when you put a fresh edge on a knife, it can change your opinion on that knife. The difference between, say, a factory edge and, uh, uh, you know, your own edge or a factory edge and not. And also, even just the edge that's on it versus a brand new fresh edge. You can get a whole different perspective of what a knife can do. Let's get into this. We will change the angles as we're going along so that you guys can see everything. So, with my system, I'm not going to use the little guide, but you can if you want to. And then what you would do is you would just, you know, use it on this side, go across the stone, and then use it on this side and go across the stone. But what I'm going to use is my fingers. I basically have a line that's almost always on the middle of my thumb. You can almost see it right there. It washes off right there. That is a good angle for all my knives. So I basically use that same angle with everything. And then I take it. I make sure there's a nice bit of marker on there. I lay it down the same way I go across the stone. Because I don't go across like this. I go across a little bit up like that. Puts a dot right there. That's my that's the same measurement now from one side to the other. And now that is going to be my angle. What degree is it? I don't know. It's probably it's close to about 17 degrees, but it doesn't matter. It's the angle I'm going to sharpen at, and I know it'll be a great angle for this knife. It is a great angle for the majority of knives I sharpen. I'll start off just like this so you guys can actually see, and then I will move it from side to side. Sorry, we're getting taking this long to just get started. So I also mark the blade. So I'm going to pick a spot on this blade where my finger will go every single time. I'm going to go right about there. I might want to raise my angle a little bit, but right about there seems pretty good. So, right there. That is a good spot for my fingers. And then if it starts to come off, I will replace it. Now, I'm going to use the top of my line. Very aggressive. This is a very aggressive. Now, with stones, when you first start using them, they are a little more aggressive than they're going to be for the rest of their the life of them. They just need to be broken in a little bit. So, after the first couple sharpenings, they break in and they are actually a little finer than they were when they first started. Even after this sharpening, this stone, or this diamond plate will be completely different than the way it is right now. But so far is very aggressive. Now my one complaint so far is this ridge right here going around. This is up a little bit higher than that ridge. But if I had thumb studs or something, I really wanted to get a low angle. I might be hitting here. I would have to do a 
very shallow angle and then you see how my flipper tab kind of gets in the way right there but it's working just fine i'm just saying i could see the potential for it being bad i'm barely letting my finger touch the stone as it goes across just barely and it's basically just telling me like if i stop barely touching it then i know i'm too high if i start putting pressure on my finger then i know i'm i'm changing angles i keep that mark lined right up with this mark and i bear and i let the edge touch the edge touches and then i rock it back until my finger so i'm letting the edge touch then I slowly let it drop until my finger barely touches. That's my angle. And then the pressure I'm pushing on the edge is, isn't much. It's very light. Now, I'll use a little bit more pressure in the beginning than I will later on because, you know, I'm going to want the edge to get finer and finer. So far, it looks beautiful. I'm ready for the other side. Um, yeah, very aggressive uh, diamond plate. But, you know, you want to let the diamonds do the work. They don't last as long if you... Uh, are using a ton of pressure constantly now you use a little bit of pressure from the start but not much and then as you go on if you're gonna just keep using diamonds like when i'm doing my burr removal i'll use lighter and lighter pressure Look at it, very cool. A little bit more. Even though my burr is all the way over, um, I can tell my bevels just needs a little tiny bit more, just a couple more um, passes. That feels good. Okay, let's look at both the sides. It looks fantastic. You can see all my grip pattern is going the same direction. My bevel looks nice and even from heel to toe. Even if it has a little bit of a taper from bigger to smaller, that's just the thickness changing, but it looks great. Let's flip the stone to the aluminum oxide. I'll try to use it dry for a second, but then I'm going to switch it now. I'm going to go from the other direction. For those of you that want to watch from the other direction. Now, like I said, I'll test it to see how it is. Honestly, it doesn't really feel that bad being dry. I normally never use these dry. <clears throat> I almost always use them with lubrication. I know the package says no lubrication needed, but I don't trust that <laughs> because these things are known to clog up. You see all that steel? I mean, I know right now it can rub off, but after sharpening, after sharpening, after sharpening, this stone will get very clogged. And that's not just this stone, that's just stones, period. I'm folding up a towel and putting it in my pocket to use to sit down my hip to run down my hip so I can wipe my blade off on it now um if you're wondering <clears throat> what I'm doing to do the difference between the heel and the tip all I'm doing is when I line this up I line the heel up first okay I'm not trying to do the top or anything like that like that I'm trying to do right here the first part of the edge that's the part that needs the touch as I'm pushing and I'm going across the stone and I start getting closer to the belly and the tip that I need to hit I'm just going to raise my elbow up 
until the tip is touching and I can actually feel it touch and see it. So you want to see it and feel it. And then also I can feel on my thumb going across the stone, the same patterns get repeated. So I try to repeat the same feeling that I'm getting on my thumb over and over and over. Very nice. This this is a the stones are pretty good so far. I'm liking them a lot. Much more than I thought. Well, I mean, I knew I was gonna like these, but wow. We are already technically ready to go to the other side, but I want to hit this side one more time. And just do a couple one and one passes. This is basically a burr removal. All right, we still have a good burr, but we will get it on this stone. All right, it says no, no lubrication, so we're gonna try it dry like it says, but I would normally wanna put some uh, lubrication Look at the stone. You can actually see a little bit of a pattern going across it. I'm guessing that's machining lines. Um, that's what I'm guessing. Let's go like this and then I'll switch to the other side when I push away. Now you see that? Now if I had the lubrication on there, most likely that would come right off pretty quickly. Looks fantastic. We'll take a good look at it. Now it's not done yet, so we still have a bit more work to do. Let's just finish it up and then we'll look at it. No, let's switch sides. We'll go to the push. These tri stones are awesome. I really like these tri stones and I highly recommend them. They last a long time. You can get a lot of sharpenings on them. They're cheap. You get literally all three stones. I think these are two by six inches. So they're perfect for pretty much any size folding knife, even a lot of fixed blades. Does a bigger stone help? It can. But this is a perfect size. You could sharpen on these for and get amazing, amazing results. So when I go across the stone, I'm starting with my heel. Then when I get to here, I'm raising my elbow and then I'm coming back and dropping my elbow. Up, down, up, down. And then when I get to finishing, I'll just do one and one passes and I won't, you know, bring my edge backwards. And this is looking really good. I, do, I would rather use lubrication on this though. You know what, let's just throw a little squirt on it and try it out. Oh yeah, see how fast that came up? Look at that. From soap and water, look at that. Let's try 
tried it, John. Clean it off a little bit. From the fibers from the towel. Like this, I'm going across the stone, lifting it up with my finger still there, putting the edge down and letting my finger barely touch. So I know I'm going to repeat the same angle over and over. Same thing on this side. We need to keep going. We want to get the entire burr over to the other side and then we will do a burr removal. There we go. All right. If you're wondering what the burr is, the burr is the steel that I am removing from the one side that pushes over to the other side. So if I'm scratch, if I'm sharpening this side, then I will feel the burr off of this side. I will rub my finger here and make sure I feel a metal wire folding over the edge that I'm sharpening. So this side I'll be sharpening, this side will have steel fold over to this side. And then when I rub right here, I will feel the steel. Let's do some one and one passes for a burr removal. And then we will talk about what I think about this stone. You want to take your time, constantly look at your edge. Even if you have to look at your edge after every single pass, do it. That's fine. Yes, it will take you a little longer, but you will be faster and have a better edge in the long run. Your edge will be much more um, professional or much more uh, consistent and it just it, you wind up end up going faster when you take your time when you're watching your edge watching all the movements watching the steel removal Now 
Now I'm going to start using light, light pressure. Very light pressure. You can probably hear the difference. I'm just basically letting the knife rest on the stone and go over it. Not using barely any pressure at all. Even when I was using pressure, it was very little. Not a lot, but you still want to use a little bit of pressure. You know, like when I say let the stone do the work, I mean, don't sit there and put all your weight on the knife. Put a little bit of pressure, you know, a couple pounds maybe or something. But with diamonds, you can use less pressure, but you still use a little bit. It's just, you know, if you sit there and push down on the plate really hard, you can wear the diamonds out a little bit faster, depending on the quality of the stone, too. But you still want to put just a little bit of pressure, not much. But you want to let the stone do the cutting, not the weight of your body. But you still need the pressure to hold the angle and run it across the stone and cut the steel. All right, let's check it out. Oh man, that's really sharp, boy. Woo! All right, this is about done. I am going to strap it, and then we will, you know what, we'll just take a look at it just from here without no strap really quick. Let's look at the edge. Very, very nice. Come on. Nice flat edge. Let's test it. Since I'm not going to be returning this stone, <laughs> let's use the receipt paper from the stone. Oh, I've got wet stuff right here. Let's lift this up a little bit. Whew, very sharp. I can feel there's a little tiny thing I could hit with the strap, but we still have the strap. So, but other than that, very, very sharp. Let's drop it. Let's just use this dry stone right here since this one's nice and dry. This is white compound. And just a, a piece of leather. Leather strap. All right, now let's check it on the receipt. Oh yeah. Feel one little spot right there. Just to take it to the next level, I'm going to hit it a couple times on a real fine ceramic because I'll talk about this stone here in one second. You know, I'll just talk about it right now. So the stone is fantastic. I think it's an amazing stone. I think the stone works great. Um, I think the diamond stone is very aggressive, but it will break in. Same thing with the aluminum oxide. Now the ceramic stone, it's to me, it's not a fine ceramic. That is a medium ceramic. Um, it's probably a little more coarser of a ceramic than even some mediums, but it will break in and it'll probably get finer and finer as time goes. This was the first time it was used, so it's going to be the most probably aggressive it will ever be. 
And you guys seen the machine lines, kind of? Normally, ceramics are ultra flat. That one had um, not waves, but just it looked like a little bit of machining lines. That's not a big deal. It didn't I couldn't feel them going across the stone or anything, but I could see them. Now with the ceramic, since this one's a little bit more aggressive, I didn't really have to put pressure really on the ceramic of this stone, um, the one on the this tri-stone one. Um, normally, like the finer it is, and also depending on how much grit I'm going to take off. Now, if I would have put a little bit more pressure, I don't know what I'm doing. If I would have put a little bit more pressure, yeah, it probably would have polished the edge, you know, or at least took a lot of the grit away. Oh yeah. Very, very sharp. Grip pattern is very consistent. Very sharp. Okay, very quickly, let's talk about conditioning and flattening these stones because eventually they will need it. So you can get a flattening stone. This is a flattening stone. So when this thing starts to dish, meaning like I, I remove a lot of the material from the stone from sharpening, it'll start dishing out. So the middle of it will lose a lot of materials and it'll start growing a hump in there. I'm gonna wanna take a flattening stone and some hot water and flatten it so and then it'll make it nice and flat because this thing's perfectly flat now just to um condition it you might want to do that you know here and there and just keep up with it then you won't have to do a full flattening if you do it you know every once in a while but you'll get a lot of sharpenings off of this before you have to do that now conditioning stone is a little bit different you know it's kind of the same thing but you're basically just taking the layer the surface layer that you're sharpening on and you're conditioning it back to a good cutting surface depending on the stone you're using so like this little ceramic stone i'm i would take like a fine diamond and you know scratch the surface of this and it would take you know, the, the, the top layer off basically and give me a nice fresh layer of the ceramic. So now like a Veneve stone, which this is a diamond infused stone, I would use um, like a medium aluminum oxide and you see like the material right there. I got to do that while I'm sharpening it every once in a while to bring up the diamonds. So um, I'm, you know, bringing the diamonds out of the you know from the surface or to the surface i should say so i'm basically just knocking the layer off and exposing the diamonds with this you know after a while sometimes these stones get glazed and you need to just remove a really fine layer off you know you can um i do recommend using uh, soap and water with this at least on the aluminum oxide and the ceramic that will will help keep the steel from clogging the pores but you can also use other aluminum oxide stones sometimes and just rub them together you can use uh there's diamond flattening stones there's lots of different stones that are specifically for conditioning and flattening your other stones and like i said you can use other stones and just rub them together that does work but a lot of times it's good to just have a specific stone for that job you know but like everything you can improvise the ceramic stone uh you know this would go a long time i would just keep cleaning it and what i would do with this is i would use like barkeeper's friend which is a powder or like a baking soda and i'd bring it up to the sink and i would just really rub that powder into the surface and bring out all the steel um and i would just 
you know, continuously do that, and that'll help condition the surface of this stone. Now, if this stone kind of glazes over, that's kind of okay because this is a ceramic. Well, it's not really glazing. It, when this surface, this surface is just going to probably get smoother and smoother as time goes on, being a ceramic. So eventually, if you want to, you could take like a diamond plate and scratch the surface up. It'll make it a little bit more aggressive, but you can get away a long time, if not forever, with Barkeeper's Friend, um, which is a powder um, for cleaning stuff and just basically scrubbing the surface of this. The Diamond Stone, you can just, you know, it's just steel powder on top of it. You just basically wipe it off. You can use water with this if you want to, but you don't have to. So there you guys go. That's how you're going to want to maintain this thing, take care of it, and it'll keep working for a long, long time. These things last a long, long time. They are a great deal for $34. I can't tell you how good of a deal this is. I love you guys. Peace.